Welcome, everybody, to episode two of the of, game. <laughs> most, most unhelpful podcast you'll ever hear. Yeah. Um, welcome to the most shallow experience of your life, and we hope you come away the exact same as you came in. Mm -hmm. um, Just hopefully with maybe a laugh or two in there. Yeah, we hope you've expended a little bit of energy laughing. So basically, we hope you come out of every podcast a little weaker than you came in. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, welcome. Th th this is the podcast centered yeah. um, around Ethan and myself, which is Gameton Abbey, which is a YouTube channel where we play games of different sorts. And yeah. we've now begun a podcast. And and I genuinely enjoyed the first one and actually listened to it again twice more after we did it um, and, and actually laughed at us. So I, I really enjoyed this. We... Um, we, we we're having a great time, guys. This this mm -hmm. is a this is an enjoyable experience for both of us. I think it really is. Um, so, so, for those of you who haven't listened to any of our episode before, um, <laughs> any of our episode, we we uh, it, we generally have a very like a whose line is it anyway vibe where we just kind of jump around from segment to segment, just having having some fun. Yeah. Um, this episode is going to be very similar to our last. Um, in terms of segments, uh, but we are introducing a new segment that is going to kind of fill the gap that our longer intro filled in the first episode. Yeah, because so we were still... like, yeah, I was like, well, the the intro on the last one was a little bit longer, so maybe we fill something, um, fill something in there, and so yeah, we're gonna add, um, we're gonna add an Amazon review where we each find an Amazon review that we would um, like to read. Which will come after our fan fiction reading. So, indeed. Um, but to to kick this whole thing off, we're going to start again with Wikipedia articles. Um, a yep. slight change this time, though, um, because oh. the last one was so brief. Um, we're going to do up to three oh, Wikipedia yes. That's articles. Right. We talked yeah. about this, and I forgot about it. <laughs> Um, so if we only get like two minutes out of mm -hmm. a article, then we'll we'll hit it again for a second one. And if that or like takes you us... know last time where we got thirty seconds. <laughs> precisely, precisely. So um, just kind of we're giving ourselves some flexibility in terms of the amount of articles we can look at. Um, so let me go ahead and hit this button that I have. Um, it's for all of you who who want this link for whatever reason. Uh, it's en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash special colon random, and that will give you a random Wikipedia page. And I will link all one to three of these Wikipedia pages in the description of the video podcast and the audio podcast on iTunes. So you can all check out these articles um, along with us. So All, all I, the while, while you were talking and being helpful, I'm sitting here staring at my mic trying to get it just to the right comfortable level. So I heard none of what you just said, but yes to all of it. Yes, to all of it. Um, so here we have our very first Wikipedia article of the... Oh, of, my gosh. Um, so, Ethan, do you want to give this a, uh, a try at pronunciation here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, Cornelius Garrett... Uh, Cor Cornelis. Oh, oh my, my bad. There's no you, U. Cornelis yeah. Garrett's Decker. Um, the Garrett's, however, is spelled like... Okay, what is this? Dutch? Which, so I'm going to say... Yeah. Get, an, extra, an extra consonant where it's not necessary. Uh, dang it. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how Dutch would pronounce S-Z. Um, Gerst. Gerich. Gerich. Uh, I have no idea. Yeah. It's a, <laughs> Cor Cornelis, Cornelis Decker. Decker. <laughs> um, he was a Dutch Golden Age landscape painter. Let me just quick, mm. quickly see what this Dutch Golden Age thing is all about. Yeah. Um, Roughly spanning yeah. the 17th century, in which Dutch trade, science, military, and art were among the most acclaimed in the world. Interesting. I'd like I'd like to mention that he lived for exactly 60 years, mm -hmm. um, like to not to the day, but to the year um, from 1618 in Harlem to 1678 <laughs> in Harlem. Um, he, he was yeah. a landscape painter. Um, there's not much on here about him, but if I if I'm looking at these paintings, uh, they're pretty good paintings. Yeah, I actually quite enjoy the first top, that top, the first top one, um, that, the that only one. and first and last top one. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> the wooden shed one below is uh, pretty intricate mm. too. 
wooden shed by a stream. I, I like how the top one is the St. Bavo, Bavo Church in Harlem, seen from the south side of the Udgenlert. Um, in 1658, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Bottom one is wooden shed by a stream. Uh, looking up his name on Google Images, a lot of his images, a lot of his paintings are actually like lopsided wooden buildings with a That's... handful of like regal looking ones. But it's basically oh, yeah. just like landscapes and trees. They look very similar, but they're they good. they do have a very yeah they have a very similar feel. However, I really. I, I'm looking at one right now that it's like, um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to explain the difference from any of the other ones, but yeah, that's, I actually quite like that. I would, I would put that as a wallpaper or such for about isn't it, th three hours. Yeah. Yeah. For about three hours. <laughs> isn't it great how we are looking at a, the life of a painter from 1618 to 1678 on the computer, looking at all of his life's work and I'm going, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put that as a wallpaper. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, you know, uh, however many three hundred years ago, four hundred years ago, <laughs> he was like, "I am working hard, and my this is my life. I might die at any day." Is that Dutch? <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, so Cornelis, thank you for that. Um, let me hit this button again. Uh, what? What? <laughs> All right, talk about a tonal shift. Um, this <laughs> this is the JDS Akishio. Oh. <laughs> uh, it was a Japanese diesel electric uh, submarine. It was laid down in 1983, launched in 85, commissioned in 86, and served until 2004. The way the way you said that made it sound like it's now not a Japanese diesel submarine. <laughs> it was that. I, I anyway. really I like how like the people will name like especially boats like the Titanic had like a lifespan and it says like yeah. when it was laid down when it was launched uh, and how long it was out until they like decommissioned it it's like a yeah. literally a lifespan kind of deal um, lived and died for submarines this this was just a Japanese submarine I don't even know if this was used in any war how uh, how big okay that's a car next to it does look pretty tiny, so I, that that looks in the picture it looks not that big, and then you realize that's like semi on the road by it, and it's like oh yeah okay that's quite large. Um, it was used in some Pacific Reach drills in two thousand. Um, Mitsubishi uh, heavy industries. Nothing has happened with this boat with this submarine, and yet for some reason it has a Wikipedia page. Yeah, I mean, really, like, it has a large, like, f for how little info it has actually happened about the submarine, there's quite a lot of info on this page for it. Yeah, well, like, we, we know what kind of motor it has, shaft with a five-bladed propeller, speed 12 knots, uh, six torpedo tubes. Teardrop hull. Classic. Mm. Classic. Uh, oh, sonar arrays, you know, that's always good. Anyway, so. I'm moving away from this. Okay. Um, so, wow, we're, 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 we're just really hitting the heavy hitters today. Um, who is this, Ethan? Wait, again, Danish. Susi <laughs> Pedersen. That is like, so, am I, am I being insensitive? Is no, that insensitive? Okay. Because we don't, we don't know what the accent is, but I really yeah. like what this person did. Um... <laughs> I just read it. Yeah. Susie, I'm just going to say Susie Pedersen. I don't know if that's actually how you say it, but Susie Pedersen, born 21st of July 1960 in Copenhagen, is a Danish wheelchair curler. <laughs> uh, multiple sclerosis and is was in the Paralympic Games in 2006. That's that's actually freaking awesome. It's just the the image of wheelchair curling makes me think of curling wheelchairs, not in a wheelchair curling. Yeah. Also, also when people say curling, for some reason I think of like getting a dumbbell and curling it rather than like the sport <laughs> of curling. So even funnier than thinking of curling a wheelchair, I think of like using a wheelchair as a dumbbell, which is even funnier to me. I, I always think the opposite. Whenever I hear curling, no matter if it's hair or a dumbbell, I think of someone throwing a massive rock donut on the ice and s people sweeping in front of it. 
<laughs> so, so if you think of a weightlifter curling, you think of a big like bodybuilder just on the ice, gently it, it, throwing my, this rock down the ice. The, the image just snaps into my head, and I can't control it. Oh man, she, so, she, you. Yeah, okay. I have no more jokes. <laughs> okay. So, so that was Wikipedia. Um, I, I feel a little better having done three because it oh, kind yeah. of gave us a little bit of hopping around to do. Mm-hmm. Now. Uh, we're going to do a fanfic again, because that was honestly the best part of the last episode. <laughs> it, it, it really was. Um, um, this time, the... the Oh, and I, I want to say, I want to say, with with the last um, fanfiction... Do we need to talk about how we, incorrect we were? We need to talk about in, how incorrect we were. Many things that we laughed at that were quite funny to us were actually correct things, which in my mind, are even funnier than thinking of them as wrong. <laughs> yeah. Because, first of all, doorbells are a thing in... Um, in yeah, it's, just, it's basically just a door with, like, a, a piece of rope hanging... A, a bell, a bell with, with a piece a of rope, rope hanging, yeah, and you, like, yeah, ring it which, like which makes a lot more sense when we were like, oh, okay, that we makes sense. We were thinking, like, a wall. doorbell ding-dong. Yeah, ding- <laughs> Yeah. Which is um, funny. Which is still very funny. Um, but also... Lo- oh, dang it, what was her name? Lobelia, Lobelia, Lobelia Sackville Baggins, yeah, Sackville Baggins, yeah, and and sure enough, we looked at the Wikipedia page, and it was exactly what it said in. She was a, the, um, she was a character from Lord of the Rings, and she apparently had an actor who played an actress who played her in the movie for however brief of a scene. Yeah, exactly. For like what ten seconds, not even. Yeah, um, I don't. I, I saw the extended editions like six months ago, and I don't remember this person yeah, at all. And I think there was also something else. But basically, my point is that was funny in a, of itself that we thought it was made up. But the fact that somebody not only dreams of themselves being awesome in The Hobbit, but they also knew as much about The Hobbit as they, they did. They knew these very specific things. Yeah, um, that I, as someone who considers themselves to be a, a relatively normal fan of Tolkien did not know. Yeah, and um, didn't even think it could exist, and they do. And the, that is even funnier to me than the fact of them being dumb. The word Dwaro apparently was yes, Tolkien's Dwaro. version of dwar- the plural of dwarves. So Which that I wasn't... actually do I do feel a little dumb about because I think I did know that at one point and just forgot. I, I had so. never heard of that in my life. Yeah, I I heard that he had like an inside joke thing that was all about that. I don't know. Um, I think inside joke with himself. I don't think anyone else was in on the joke. So uh, we we feel a little bad for unnecessary making fun of of this person, but at the same time, it's like it, if you're gonna bring up Lobelia of all people <laughs> to be a part of your story, I think it's okay if we ridicule you a little bit. Yeah, just just a bit, just a bit. Just um, a bit. So so Ethan had the dealer. The dealer chip is in front of Ethan. Heath, he Ethan. He <laughs> has. It's better. Chosen. It's better than Ethan Satan, which I've e- gotten. Ethan Satan has chosen mm-hmm. a fanfic this evening. Ethan, what is your fanfic fan friction <laughs> from? Fan friction. Well, um, I I don't want to say the title. I just want to start into it because it'll be funnier that way. Okay, good. Right. Um, uh, can you give us a word length for for people to compare? Um, the last story I read was like seven hundred seven hundred to seven hundred and fifty words so how oh, long okay. is this one ethan this one is almost a thousand it's at 998 okay so good. it's it's two off of being a thousand okay um, so um do you want to just dive in yeah yeah i want i want to just dive into this so. okay let, let's let's see how this goes um hot dogs get your fresh hot dogs cried voldemort from his portable <laughs> hot dog stand <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait I've one never, second. I want to say, I want to say, we've been doing this for four years, and I've never heard you laugh like that. <laughs> of all the people to say that, Voldemort is the last person on the list. Oh I, I, see, part of me wants to ask what the title of this is, but I don't because I still want this like blind. No, no, no. That's that's all I wanted it to be blind for was that line. Um, it's okay, just okay. called Voldemort's Hot Dogs. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Well, continue, please. Oh, man. Uh. <laughs> so, Hot Dogs... 
can't. Hot dogs, get your fresh hot dogs, cried Voldemort from his portable hot dog stand. Mm-hmm. Um, Harry's, Harry was interested in this. He Had he heard right that there were hot dogs to be eaten? He went in line and waited patiently. Finally, it was his turn. It felt like hours, but it had, in fact, been 528 days. <laughs> what? <laughs> Voldemort. What? <laughs> Your lord, man. A year and a half? <laughs> You're putting hot dogs in a bun. You really, really take your time, man. Or, or Voldemort's hot dog stand is just insanely popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he got in line and he's like 17 miles away. Uh, <laughs> um, he got in front of the stand and opened his mouth when... Dot, dot, dot. We're all out. Sorry. Harry frowned. Wait, what'd you say? I said we're all out of hot dogs. You'll have to come back tomorrow. <laughs> After 528 days. <laughs> yeah. In one day, he'll have more hot dogs. I don't understand. Look, I don't really know who you are or what you want, but I ain't got no wieners anymore. <laughs> That's all in caps. Um, <laughs> Harry was really annoyed. I am the chosen one, and I want a hot dog now. <laughs> You're getting me angry, and you won't like me when I'm angry. And I'm the Dark Lord. What could possibly scare the Dark Lord? Harry snapped his fingers. A barrage of blue elephants, mountain bikes, and people named John <laughs> ran out <laughs> Wait, 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 one damn second. You, did you say elephants, uh, zebras, what was it? Elephants, no, no, no. motorcycles, and people named John? <laughs> a barrage. <laughs> can't. A barrage. A barrage of blue elephants, mountain bikes, and people named John ran at Voldemort. <laughs> okay, good. Good. Continue. I just need a clarification. Whew. Oh, smacking him into the ground. Unfortunately, some of the blue elephants spotted Cornelius's, Cornelius Fudge's buller hat, and they ran screaming at him and stole the hat. Hmm. Voldemort's face went red. Or maybe that was just the blood. <laughs> <laughs> See what you started? Now they have the hat, the bisons will get involved, and then the woolly mammoths will come back from the Ice Age. And then, he dramatically looked at non-existent camera... The tacos will come. Uh, <laughs> oh, see this. This feels like so. Uh, what would you call it? Like the the fact that he turns to a non-existent camera is like such a specific thing. But then he says a line that sounds like it was written by an eight-year-old. Yeah, so I know. I don't, I don't know what kind of person wrote this. I know it's. I I have no read on them because. Whereas the last one was obviously like a 14-year-old girl writing it, yeah, this is very confusing because he dramatically <laughs> looked at a non-existent camera. Non and existent have a dash between them, and there's a period at the end of the sentence. The, wow. the grammar and the, the punctuation is incredibly good in this, except the tacos will come with it's, a period it's, inside the apostrophe. Is, it's, it's like a, a t- something you'd find on a t-shirt from JCPenney's. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm very confused. Um, he had the full attention of the bi- innocent bystanders on the street now. Innocent bystanders, what, are they going to die? Um, they were all staring at him like he had gone crazy. Harry took advantage of the pause and picked up where Voldemort left off. But we can stop this. All you need to do is donate one hot dog and the world will not be thrown into chaos. All we need to do... And then he noticed Voldemort had gotten back up. And now the stand was not a hot dog stand anymore. <laughs> It's it's banner read Angry Mob Depot, and Voldemort was yelling, Everyone, come get the crazy kid. Get your pitchforks and torches here. Only one galleon apiece. <laughs> what is happening? What the hell is going on? Angry Mob Depot. <laughs> Home Depot, except it's only Angry Mob related items. <laughs> And then, this this is not anyone saying this. This is just the writing. Don't you love magic? It's the only thing in the world that can turn a hot dog stand into an angry mob stand in seconds. Wow. What? The crowd seemed to think that Voldemort was very smart, but Harry yelled, Wait! He immediately went up to the stand and asked, May I buy a pitchfork and torch, please? Voldemort was confused, but he complied. Harry handed over his two galleons and started stabbing himself with the pitchfork and lighting his hair on fire. <laughs> 
Hey, somebody yelled. That kid's more crazy than Charlie Sheen. I'd pay him to see this. T- I'd pay him to see. I'd pay to see him do this all day long. Oh my gosh. Yes, Harry said. Harry, I will continue doing this. My price is one hot dog per staff. <laughs> yes, I will continue doing this. Oh, uh, turning to Voldemort, he shrugged and said, "It pays." But the spell broke. Nobody was willing to give up a hot dog for anything. What spell? Like, what? <laughs> but now Voldemort's business was over. I'm t- you see, the problem is I can't tell where the story ends and your commentary on it begins. Yeah, sorry. No, literally. <laughs> but the spell broke. No one was willing to give up a hot dog for anything. But now Voldemort's business was over. I'm asking, what spell? Like, the okay. The spell was broken. I guess. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you need to give me a hot dog. Only with the hot dog can we sign the peace treaty with the tacos. I beg of you. But nobody listened until the giant King Taco finally appeared. <laughs> and he was not happy. Hmm. Why is this boy not receiving his hot dog? <laughs> I've been waiting a hundred years for this. <laughs> and, wait, who's eating my butt? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, this is a giant taco. Um, right, yeah, yeah. The, cr- the crowd, who were starting to get slightly insane, started eating the taco. Voldemort slapped Harry in the face. Harry was really angry now. He reached over to Voldemort's face. Got your nose. Voldemort scoffed. Harry, you're not fooling me. I know my nose is right. Then he realized his nose wasn't there. Hey, Classic. give me back my nose. Yeah, exactly. Give me back my nose. I command you. Give it back. Give me my hot dog. My nose, my hot dog, my nose, my hot dog, my nose, my hot dog. (laughs) That is exactly how many times it repeated those two lines. (laughs) Will you two ladies break it up, screamed the King Taco. In case you haven't noticed, the King of Tacos is dying over here. Voldemort looked at Harry. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? What are you thinking? I'm thinking we should get married. I'm just going to walk away slowly now, stated Harry. But he lied. He ran away quickly. (laughs) Well, Voldemort, Voldemort got there first. Go where, you ask? To the taco, of course. There's a giant taco out there. I would eat it myself. I'm so glad Harry and Voldemort finally agreed on something. After that, they became best friends. Then they got married. Man, this is a much more complex work. <laughs> I truly do not comprehend what we just read. I just read. Like, with my own two eyes. So, like, the the question is, even more so than, like, what kind of person wrote this, but how do you get to the point in your life where you're willing to sit down at a keyboard and make this? Yeah. Like, at, and especially at what stage of life, I'm still not sure who wrote this. Because... Like, the punctuation like, was 98% on point. Like, like you said, it, it seemed to have, like, good structure, but... The things that happened in it were something that would be in the mind of someone 20 years younger. Exactly. Like, the King Taco is incredibly juvenile, but the writing and punctuation and all that is incredibly not. I don't don't get it. Fascinating. And this is Voldemort's hot dog stand? Voldemort's Voldemort's hot dog stand. Wow. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, it's um, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm actually speaking. No, Voldemort, I don't even know Voldemort's what to hot say. dogs. I think is what it was called. But yeah, I tr- truly, what the hell was that? <laughs> like, I just I, the first line was truly my favorite. Hot dogs, get your hot dogs here! <laughs> cried Voldemort. You see, it's like <clears throat> I, I felt mm. this way with the last story too, where you have to ask, like, when I, when I think of something that I like. I would never in a million years make a fanfic about it because I feel like yeah. I would be tarnishing the actual thing. Because it's like, if you think about what we just heard, it's like, how in the world would Harry go up to Voldemort? Like, this might sound taking it more seriously than I should. How would no, Harry yeah. go up to Voldemort, who's selling hot dogs? And, like, I get that it's, like, funny, but, like... What what's the purpose? Like, what are we getting out of fan fiction that is any good? Like, I mean, like fan fiction only works, I think, when it actually like fits in the rubric of the original thing itself. You know what I mean? I yeah, it's which which is probably fiction... why 
it's probably why Fifty Shades of Grey did so well because it like it kind of like took the thing that Twilight had and like twisted it and made it more adult, but it wasn't so crazy that it didn't seem to fit in that world. And then you know it got shifted and changed around into Fifty Shades of Grey. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's it, it truly is an odd thing that I I never have understood or will understand probably. Yeah, who, maybe maybe we'll come across just the perfect fanfic in this this thing. Yeah. Now yeah. now that we've had two funny ones, maybe maybe we'll start adventuring into some seriousness and see what we can do. Maybe. So, maybe. I mean, yeah. obviously, I, I assume you didn't click on Voldemort's hot dogs thinking you were going to get a gem. Um, honestly, I kind of did. As soon as I saw Voldemort's <laughs> I mean, hot dogs, I was like... You didn't think you'd be getting a War and Peace. Uh, oh, no, no, yeah, not at all. <laughs> that that was a surprise for sure. So um, Great, great, fantastic. So uh, now we move on to this new segment, the, the Amazon reviews. Yes. Um, should I go first? Do you want to go first? Um, mm, you can go first, yes. Okay. Um, so... This was sort of a last-minute, ham-fisted thing we've done. Um, we didn't really have time to look for much, so yeah. uh, I hope to hone and improve this, the, streamline this segment a little better next time. Yeah. But the general idea and, is... And I'd like to say, in general, with our segments, not necessarily every single one will be in every mm-hmm. single podcast. Yes. Um, Wikipedia articles and privacy policies for sure are going to stick around um, every episode. Um, as for the rest, well, and f- philosophical quotes at the end and whatever. Um, as for the rest, however, it can kind of switch around. But yeah. anyways, in, yes, continue. In, yeah, I'm, I'm not expecting Amazon reviews to be in every podcast. No, 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 no. Uh, so um, the idea is we find a product and find an interesting or entertaining review for that product. Yes. Now, this can be an easy task sometimes, or it can be a hard task. And today, it was a medium task. Um, yes. Yeah. So, the customer review I have is for Q-tips, cut and swabs, 500 count, two ninety nine with Prime. All right. Yeah. Uh, almost 3,000 reviews, an average of 4.8 oh. out of 5 stars. So, most mm. people like this thing. Okay. But I found someone who did not like this thing. All right. Okay. okay. They, they, they purchased it uh, March 15th of this year, 2017. All right. So this is semi-recent, semi-recent. Semi-recent. Uh, one star out of five. Oh, man. The title. Uh, Ethan, you're familiar with Q-tips, right? You've used cotton swabs. Oh, yeah. I, I used one this morning to pick out my brains. Perfect. The, the title of this review is, in all caps, <laughs> not wood stick. <laughs> what? Um, and the the review goes as such. Um, Alrighty, I'm ready for uh, this. Uh, it'll be in all caps until I say it's not. Okay. Oh my. Okay. The picture looks like wood sticks. Parentheses. Nice tan wood color. They are not. They are lily white paper. Lowercase. And your purchases. Uppercase. Non refundable. That's it. <laughs> can can you send me this product so I can see if the picture is as they describe tan wood? I see no image that There's... displays any uh you know wood color. I mean it's slightly lighter. Yeah, it's what the I mean, Okay, the, and f- the pi- the picture where the guy is holding it to his chest to show how big the package is, they look a little darker. I I don't even see that. Where the heck I want that. Where's the um, <laughs> I, I see plenty of pictures where it's perfectly, like literally every single picture, it is obviously white. The picture looks like wood sticks though, Ethan. Wood sticks. What? Why would it be wood? Why would they put the time and effort to make wooden Q-tips, which are disposable <laughs> and you throw away immediately after sticking it up your ear? Why? Or whatever else you use it for. Why Ethan. on earth? Would Ethan. you ever make wooden Q-tips? Ethan. Uh-huh. Not wood stick. Not wood stick. One star. One star. And your purchase is non-refundable. Um, can, I, can I just give one more review that's a little higher up on this page? Absolutely. Uh, so this is two stars. The title of this review, Long Overdue for Extermination, 
ellipses, gangland steals, loots, replaces, harbored, ellipses. The review itself. What? The review itself says, stolen by gangland terrorists, cholera, Ebola, AIDS, open looting shipments from Clarysville Motel, Cumberland, Maryland. What? So what product uh, are you doing a review of, Ethan? Well, first of all, I'd like to... You can't. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to say that, you know, on this Q-tip, there is, um, there is a question and answers, of course. Right. Someone asks, is, this, is the cotton in these Q-tips sterilized? Someone says, it's clean, but I doubt it's sterilized. Um... I mean, I what? guess they're not sterile, but like... Well, at what point does cleanliness end and sterilized begin? Yeah, I guess just the fact that if you're sticking it in your ear, it'd probably have to be pretty darn clean. And also, why would they make like a package of a bunch of Q-tips at the level of what a hospital would use? Like, You know, usually you can get like more high-end Q-tips. You know, yeah. I've seen I've seen those in stores. They cost a little bit more, and they have they're in smaller packages. Yeah, I don't know that that, that was just odd. Okay, well, what do, you, what do you got? So, have you heard of the these bags of um, sugar free gummy bears? Um, oh, the Haribo thing. Mm-hmm. The yeah. sugar free. Well, okay. I don't even think some of them aren't even Haribo. They're just sugar free assorted gummy bears. Right, like a three pound um, bag or whatever it is. Yeah, this this is a five pound bag of it, so that is quite okay. a large amount okay. of sugar free gummy bears. I, I'm expecting a fantastic review coming my Absolutely. way. Absolutely. So, the 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 review is titled "You Don't Understand." All right. <laughs> Good. And and I'd like to mention that the. <laughs> I'd like to give a little bit of context right before this review starts up. Um, Should basically, you? what? Should you? Well, I'm I'm just saying that this review is the result of what happens when you eat these in, in a single sitting. Yeah. Yeah. So here here goes the review. Okay. You don't understand is the title. Yeah. I was glued to the toilet seat. Streams of fire burst from my colon. When I wasn't experiencing Satan's fury exploding from my rear, I was laying in the fetal position on my bathroom floor, sobbing and asking for forgiveness. Mm. I'm a 280-pound man. I was sobbing. When it was finally over, I couldn't move. I crawled onto the floor one last time and sat motionless until my dehydration finally required that I drink water. <laughs> the other reviews are perfectly accurate. This is absolutely 100% true. Eat two at a time, three if you're brave. But for the love of God and all things on this earth, do not eat any more. Yeah. Um, Sh Sugar-free gummies, man. Sugar-free gummies. It's really, it's really bad. Um, they, for some reason, decided to put some kind of um, stool softener, laxative type thing that's an ingredient in sugar-free gummies. And I will not understand why. Uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple other good ones on this, too. Um, be sure to also buy a tub of OxyClean with this to get the diarrhea out of your underwear, clothes, furniture, pets, loved ones, and ceiling fans. Ceiling fans. <laughs> um, and then also, the, just the first line of this one makes me laugh. What came out of me felt like someone tried to funnel Niagara Falls through a coffee straw. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, don't, don't ever... Ever okay? There is a Haribo brand of it, but yeah, don't ever buy those. That is bad, very bad. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like people who buy Diet Coke caffeine free. Where where I'm like, all right, you're basically drinking motor oil. Just either drink water or normal Coke. I mean, you got you yeah. gotta you can't have your cake and eat it too. Yeah, is the, is Co the thing. Yeah. Um. Diet Coke is literally just like, um, you know, yeah, it's, 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 it's not a dumpster, actually. It's a dumpster fire is what it is. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing to add to that. It just truly. Uh, people I mean, I... people will have, people will drink Coke mm -hmm. and then they'll be like, oh, Diet Coke is healthier. So they drink more Diet Coke than they did Coke. I'm like, that's probably worse for you. I mean, like, 
it, it might, it arguably might avoid the sugar problem, but it might present a larger problem. <laughs> yeah, the fact it, that it's pumping thing. chemicals into your body and all that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Aspartame, people. Um, Sucralose and two. Drink, drink, drink it like it's hot. So drink it like it's hot. Drink that it, that was our like Amazon hot. review uh, segment. We're now we're now shifting gears and we're gonna be driving over to Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. Where what are we, we doing, what where are we doing we, in Sweden, man? Where are we read the privacy policy of <laughs> your your favorite IKEA? Yes. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is my f- one of. Not necessarily my favorite segment, but my favorite idea for a segment ever. Yeah, truly, yeah. That spawned from an epiphany. Um, so what we're going to do is we have beverages with us here, and we're mm-hmm. going to sip these beverages and read some of the privacy policy of various companies. And we're starting with IKEA. Um, so, Ethan, what beverage are you sipping on this this segment, this episode? Um, so we were just talking about Coke, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so... Diet Coke, yeah, is basically just more of the same. Coke Zero, um, still not great for you. However, it has less stuff in it. Um, so it's it's not half as bad. It can still, you know, hit your blood sugar and all that. What, what, um, what, what is, the, like, the sweetener? Um, I'm actually... Does it say on the can? Uh, it, I don't have a can of it. Uh, Coke Zero Nutrition zero calories as opposed to diet coke um yeah i don't know i think it's just i think it's just got even less stuff in it so i don't know have you ever by chance had coke life what the crap is coke life it it is bad it is lower than diet oh, coke oh oh is that the trade. one is that the one with um like cane sugar or whatever no it's it's the one in the green can oh stevia yeah oh man no, stevia it... is the worst Oh, don't eat, don't go anywhere near that. It's basically Al Qaeda in a can. <laughs> Green Al Qaeda. Green Al Qaeda. Um, yeah, avoid yeah, it no, like the plague. It looks terrible, and I never want to try it. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I've got I've got my delicious Coke Zero. Um, even though I don't really like Coke. Um, yeah. So. You're, you're you're a root beer guy. I'm a root beer guy, a Sprite guy. Not really my, much of a Coke or Pepsi guy. I'm a. Uh... I'm real. I'm real big on 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 the Coke. Uh, I, I like I like cola, the whole cola concept. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so you're you're drinking some Coke Zero. Yes, Coke um, Zero sugar because they've now apparently improved their Coke Zero yes. wine. But, yeah. I I have uh, a glass of wine. Is this more elderberry wine or is this a different wine? Unfortunately not. I wanted to get more elderberry wine today, but they were out of it because it's a super popular wine. Because you bought all of it. <laughs> I bought all of it. Um, instead, I have Red Diamond uh, Pinot Noir from 2012. Oh, that's right. You spent an absorbent amount of money. No, this exorbitant. is a different one. I drank, we drank most of those. Dang um, it. I just said, you know, you know how I said absorbent instead of exorbitant the other day? I just and, did and it abs- again. Well, the wine technically kind of was absorbed. <laughs> That's um, <laughs> hmm, yeah. true. Uh, this is a Pinot Noir from 2012. It's a like an eight nine dollar wine, but uh, Red Diamond seems to make some solid wine for being as cheap as they are. So hmm. um, it's a decent wine. It's not chilled, which I would prefer it to be, but I didn't have time to yeah. chill it. Um, but it's okay. All right. Um, so that's what I have. Uh, now we're going to dive in to the privacy policy. Okay. Um, we're about um, we, one six of the way through. Yeah, we we left off at purchases, correct? I'm pretty sure. Or email. That we, we we read email. We read, we read email. email. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I got the catalog, and you were like, "Yeah, just go ahead." Yeah. I'm I'm honestly feeling um, that I we can read we can read uh, four. Well, let's read I mean, five pair, five. Paragraphs. Yeah, I was I was gonna say purchases through down to his website's big. Hootie. Who who do you? Um, so All right. So I uh, do you want three you or do you start, want two? Um, who read more last time? Did I read more last time? You read more last time. Okay, yeah. You you can do the first three, and I'll I'll finish off the other two. Okay, here we go, guys. Uh, purchases. When you order or purchase an IKEA product, you may be required to give us contact and payment information, such as credit card information, yeah. so we may process your order. When you pay for an IKEA product using a credit card, 
We use your credit card information only to fulfill your order and for other internal purposes. Mm. See, there you go again. There's that vague, vague thing like internal purposes. Is is yeah. your internal purpose to spend all the money that is on my we, credit card? We will only use your credit card to buy things for yeah. you that you that you acquire, and then also other purposes that we won't tell you about. What is an internal purpose anyway? Purchase verification policy. Please mm. note that IKEA may request to verify your purchases against your receipt. Please keep your receipt available to show an IKEA representative upon request. You see, mm. that is just like a, a, a high a high order to, to call because Truly. it's like you need to keep your receipt. Well, you know, not everyone's reading your privacy policy, IKEA. Yeah. Think about yeah. that. IKEA family. You ain't, we ain't Walmart over here, guys. There's no open policy on returns. Nope. Nope. Ikea family. If you sign up for Ikea family, you will be asked for your name, date of birth to confirm eligibility. Social security number, Social driver's security license number. number. Um, your your citizen identification number for the concentration mm -hmm. camp you're in. Birth certificate, obviously. Um, uh, dental records and uh, favorite color. And information about how you wish to be contacted, such as email address, mobile phone number, and home address. So, name your first cat. Name your favorite teacher. Name of the school you went to. First band. First band. What a <laughs> weird security question. What was uh, your first band? What was your first? Well, I meant to say your first favorite band, and then I just said your first band. <laughs> when was the when? What day was your sexual awakening? <laughs> Uh, oh, customer man. service, Ethan. Customer service. Yeah. Customer service. If you contact one of our customer service representatives, we may ask you for inf information such as your name, address, and email address so we can respond to your questions and comments. With your consent, oh boy, we may retain this information to personalize your experience with us and better assist you the next time you contact us. Okay. Help us to improve, um, which is called hootie in parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> parentheses. I don't know why they abbreviated that. I don't get it. I know. Help us to improve, Hootie. Is this really such an issue in their board meetings that they said, so about the Hootie section of our privacy policy? Yeah. Because help us to improve is just so much harder to say than Hootie. Yeah. Yeah. No. When you have such a hot topic as Hootie, you can't, you can't just let it sit. Yo. It's a hot mess. Anyway, uh, okay. continue, Ethan. Um, in store, we provide you with the option to leave a personal comment to the store manager. During, during this process, you have the option to provide us with such information as your name, address, email address, telephone number, so that we can respond to your questions and concerns. The information that is collected and retained by this unit is for IKEA's use only. I feel like they're just kind of saying the same thing over they and over. They really are. Like, literally, it's like, give us this info and we can do this. We'll only use it for this. Give us this info and we can like, do it for this. We'll really, only use it for this. The only difference between the customer service and Hootie section is, like, Hootie is, a ver is more specific. Because if you read the customer service paragraph, it could be the Hootie. Like, if you wow, contact really one of could. our customer service representatives, that could be the manager. <laughs> so, basically, it's manager versus customer representative. Which could be the same thing. Yeah. Right? Because isn't that, like, the job of manager? To, like, sure. basically manage the store? Yeah. Bullcrap. Bullcrap. Bullcrap, Ikea. We called out your bullcrap. We don't, we don't buy it. We're not buying any of your chairs or stools or whatever. I pillows. ain't buying your chair that comes in 1,300 pieces. Nope. With your Swedish meatball instructions. <laughs> your Swedish fish flopping around in your plans. Spe speaking of fish flopping around in plants, uh, let's move on to our final... <laughs> I said plans, but that's cool. <laughs> final, <laughs> final... Our finale uh, segment. Uh, oh. This is the philosophical quote that mm, cannot yeah. be ab applied to your life. This is... Um, I don't know about you, Ethan, but I picked another like philosopher or kind of something along that line. Did you I, I I didn't go with I went more with like inspirational. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I have someone attributed to my quote, um, but it, I, I'm I still, don't. I'm, I'm still on the philosophy line. Um, okay. So just because that was what felt so, right. Who Who went first last time? Uh, I did. Okay, so I'll go first, and you can finish off with your philosophical philosophicality. Correct. Philosophicality. So, there we go. So, so here's Ethan's quote that sounds cool, mm -hmm. but doesn't mean anything. 
So I'd like to say that this this do you start, have a person? This, do you have a person? It, no, this? I have no picture um, person, but it is a picture. Um, <laughs> I have no person, but it's a picture. Um, the picture is you know like sepia toned uh, road. Nice. Um, with good. Good. Corn, good. Yeah, with what what looks like similar to cornfields on the sides, but not corn. Um, mountains in the distance that looks like a Windows ninety five uh, background. Good. Um, as well as a nice cloudy sky. Um, it says it says, don't call it a dream. Call it a plan. So there you go. Don't call it a dream. Call it a plan. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's so vague. Really take that to heart and learn nothing from it. That that that's like that's like uh, surface level, uh, sea level on on the water uh, motivation. On, yeah, where it's like if, that thing you want to do. Think that you want to do it. Like that yeah. thing that you want to do. Keep wanting to do it. That and thing make, make it something dream. you actually want to do. <laughs> Yeah. Thing that's your dream that you want to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, if if motivation was as deep as an ocean, this is uh this is a plane. Can I can I can I make that that motivational <laughs> quote over a, that same kind of image and just post that to your Facebook? <laughs> well, <laughs> that thing you want to do in life? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That that thing that gets you up every morning, who boy. <laughs> that thing that motivates you every day, uh huh. <laughs> Perfect. Oh um, man, lovely. So, so I have I have a quote from Budha. B- Budha, the fat man, the fat man who smiles. Mahatma Buddha. Mahatma Buddha. Um, this this is a, uh, a a quote that's just for no reason over the pic of picture of the northern lights, all right. Uh, the borealis, if you will. The aurora um, bara. So Buddha, you know, obviously the pioneer of Buddhism. It was basically just the most vaguest, the most vague religion because it's like the most vaguest. You, you know how you meditate and you feel like you're a person. Well, you are, and eventually, when you just want to become part of the everything. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. like thanks, Buddha. Thumbs up. Um, there, there is things to it that I like because it truly is like you know being yourself and being, you know, content and happy. But at the same time, it's like that's all you get in life. I was like, oh, that's actually a little bit of a letdown in my opinion. But yeah, th- there's okay. got to be more to life than chasing around every temporary high. Yeah. Anyway, so this is my quote from Budha. Okay. Budha, you ready? Mm. Yes. The foot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, I, this is like, like, I, okay, I just have to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you're thinking, what could Buddha say that begins with the foot? There's, there's two things in my mind right now. First of all, what could, yeah, what could begin with the foot? Second of all, I just, <laughs> I just imagine Buddha saying the foot. <laughs> the, the foot mm-hmm. feels <laughs> this is really hard to get through because this is a preposterous quote. <laughs> the foot feels the, mm-hmm. the foot feels the foot when it feels the ground. Wait, what? That's it. Wait, no, 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 no. Repeat that back to me. The foot feels the foot when it touches the ground. When it feels the ground. When it feels the foot, the foot feels the foot. When it feels the ground. <laughs> yeah. What? The foot feels the foot when it feels the ground. Actually, if you Google it, after that quote, there's meaning. <laughs> what does it, feels it mean? The ground. Um. F- wait, fake Buddha quotes. Really? It might be a fake quote, which um, which actually is why I, I looked it up just now because it, it might not actually it didn't sound okay. Yeah, I was, I was gonna say I was like at least usually like like honestly there is some wisdom in um in some Buddhist sayings that are like really nice and like you know keeping true to yourself and all that. And the foot feels the foot when it feels the ground. What the crap? <laughs> um, whether or not that was actually him, it's a it's a. <laughs> It's a pretty obtuse quote. Yeah. Um, I will say that much. 
a bit a bit of searching revealed that it comes from Ernest Woods' 1971 Zen dictionary, um, explaining nat explaining the term naturalness. So there, it is a serious quote, just not from Buddha. Some other dude named Mister Wood <laughs> came up with this. So like, do you not feel your foot unless it's touching something? I and if so, what's the spiritual analog to that? What do we get? Right, like, sure, you don't feel something with your foot, or you don't feel your foot until you feel it on something, but what the, how does that help anything? And I'm, <laughs> that, oh, the, Lord. that last thing you just said perfectly sums up our podcast. And ladies yeah, and gentlemen, truly. how did this help anything? We don't know. But you know what? Don't thank know. you. Thank you all so much for listening to episode two. Absolutely. Um, I had a blast. It was absolutely say. wonderful. Um, and we hope to just keep making more of these. Um, we're going to try to figure out more segments, uh, try to shuffle it up a little bit, um, mm -hmm. and just have the gayest of times. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So until next time, everybody, um, see ya. Au revoir? Ah, uh, uh, revoir. Ah, uh, uh, revoir. <laughs> yeah, bye. <laughs>